Good morning, everyone. I'm Dave Mounier, Team Cymru Fellow at Team Cymru. It's an honor to be able to present to you today uh, as a keynote for Aaron. Uh, Aaron is an important organization to the structure and safety and future of the internet. Uh, and today what I want to show you uh, is some of the things that happened on the internet uh, on a given day. Uh, I've just selected a random one. Uh, and hopefully it will highlight uh, why security policy and practice matters. So first, who is Team Cymru? Well, we're a company that set out uh, with the mission to save and improve human lives. Uh, our founders uh, were looking at uh, what ways uh, we could contribute uh, benefit to society as a whole uh, and looked at the internet uh, as a powerful tool. Uh, in fact, as powerful as a printing press or our ability to control file, fire, things like that. Uh, but we looked at the internet uh, as a thing of its own uh, and something that should be looked after uh, for the sake of the internet itself. Uh, so as opposed to for he perhaps the specific network owners or uh, the specific users or things like that, uh, but kind of looking out for it uh, in its entirety uh, for the purpose of, of uh, ensuring that it's available uh, for man. We did this, uh, what we started by doing was to understand how miscreants uh, were going to uh, misuse and abuse the internet. Uh, we tried to understand how they would be monetizing it, uh, how they would uh, be uh, uh, turning it into a weapon, uh, how they could be uh, turning it into ways to steal information, uh, and so on. Uh, and we started that uh, by initially uh, looking almost solely at, at botnets. Uh, this is uh, going back 10 plus years ago, uh, that was kind of the biggest uh, scourge, if you will, uh, on the internet, uh, and still is a, a major part. Uh, but what we did uh, was we started by collecting uh, malware. Uh, these days we collect something like 400,000 pieces of malware in the course of a day. Um, but we look at that malware, we detonate it, uh, and look to see what does it talk to out on the internet, uh, and who's controlling it, and things like that. Uh, and then we take that information uh, and work with the ISPs and IXPs, NSPs, transit providers, and so on. Uh, we work with those folks who make the internet uh, happen uh, to understand what traffic they should be blocking uh, and to understand uh, how they can maximize the monetization uh, of their network links. Uh, and in return uh, for that, uh, we're allowed uh, to take uh, a, a look at kind of what miscreancy looks like uh, in the world as a whole. And with that information, uh, we then feed it into uh, more than 130 CSERT teams around the world uh, to help uh, people do something about it, if you will. So to go out and remediate uh, those threats. Now, in addition to that, uh, we're also a function company uh, that provides threat intelligence uh, as a commercial product uh, into many of the security products uh, that you know of uh, in the marketplace that you've seen. Uh, a lot of our intelligence uh, is in those tools. Uh, so perhaps your firewall uh, will be updated by rules tonight, uh, with rules tonight uh, by the vendor uh, that you get it from. Uh, but there's a good chance uh, that our insight uh, is what is going into that update uh, as we've tracked uh, bad things happening uh, we update that information uh, and share that uh, with our vendor uh, partners. And then those partners then uh, deliver that into products. So in addition to that, uh, we also uh, provide intelligence services, uh, largely retributive and investigative uh, intelligence services uh, for companies around the world. So with that kind of view, uh, we end up seeing uh, just about 40% chance or so of us seeing the activity uh, of a specific actor uh, online. So now we're not alone uh, in having uh, this fondness for the internet. Uh, as many of you uh, here today know, uh, the internet is an incredibly powerful, powerful tool. Uh, and it may be uh, why some of you have even uh, chosen this career path. So, but when you look at uh, the, the internet as a whole, uh, and you look at its impact in society, uh, there are people who uh, recognize it uh, as an amazing tool uh, that routes information uh, from one person to another or from one organization to another. Uh, perhaps one of those uh, people is a doctor who's uh, getting additional input and, and help uh, from other doctors around the world while they're working on a problem. Uh, or perhaps uh, some of the 
uh, detail uh, being shared on the internet uh, is you know investment information uh, where uh, people are uh, able to do research uh, and understand uh, how uh, new products are coming to the marketplace or new services are coming and how to invest in those things and, and help uh, perhaps even to bring those services uh, to their part of the world uh, and how to work together and, and how to uh, collaborate on things. Uh, the internet also is obviously a lot of fun. There are people uh, using it to play games. Uh, there are people uh, using it uh, to um, keep in touch with family, uh, share photos, uh, all of those types of things as well. Uh, but the internet uh, as a whole uh, is this large uh, collection of various uh, good uses. But in addition to those good uses, uh, there's also quite a bit of bad uh, that goes on. Uh, and for that reason, I think uh, probably one of my favorite uh, internet quotes here uh, about the internet uh, is one from uh, Paul Vixie, uh, where he simply states, the internet is not for sissies. Uh, and while Paul uh, is likely referring to someone's feelings or whatnot uh, while they're chatting about it, uh, what hopefully I'm going to be able to show you today uh, is it's also uh, can be a somewhat a dangerous place uh, and something that we need to keep that in mind uh, as we make use of it. So let's take a close look uh, at occurrences and activities on the internet uh, on just a random day. Uh, and for the sake of this presentation uh, today, uh, the random day uh, that I selected uh, was uh, the 23rd of March, uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, 2021. Uh, and I wanted to highlight and show you all of the things uh, that we were able to see uh, happen on the internet uh, on that day. So. For starters, uh, on that day, uh, the SolarWinds hack uh, was in the news. Uh, I'm sure all of you uh, saw uh, that information uh, when it was in the press. Uh, the hack uh, was a, effectively a supply chain attack. Uh, there were, uh, there were uh, someone had gained access uh, to uh, SolarWinds uh, company uh, infrastructure, uh, had found a way uh, to uh, attack and insert uh, malware into a supply chain, and when all of the people in the world uh, had their uh, Orion uh, instances updated, uh, they incorporated uh, this malicious bit of code uh, that allowed a remote actor uh, to gain access to it. Uh, this was a big story. Uh, it was attributed back uh, to the Russian Federation, believed to be actors from there, operating on behalf of the government there, um, and it was a big deal. Uh, also on that day, uh, there was a, a fresh detail about a Microsoft Exchange hack uh, that was happening. Uh, it was believed to involve uh, 30,000 or so exchange servers uh, that had been attacked uh, by a zero day vulnerability on the internet uh, that were internet facing exchange servers. Uh, if you're not familiar with Microsoft Exchange, it was the mail server uh, system written by Microsoft. And uh, this was also really big this was a big deal as well. Uh, and in this case, it was attributed uh, back to likely Chinese actors, uh, again, uh, supposedly acting on behalf uh, of the country, there, uh, on behalf of the government's interests. But those two uh, specific uh, key details, uh, while exciting uh, and while uh, very, very uh, intriguing, uh, in particular, as you look at them, as they tie together uh, the ideas of nation state actors uh, and criminal activities, uh, those are, are really exciting things. Uh, but they were just some of the small things uh, actually happening on the internet that day. Uh, and there is actually a kind of a constant uh, background miscreancy that's happening on the internet, uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, and what seems to be uh, happening is in most part, uh, many of us are becoming uh, somewhat uh, immune uh, and unresponsive and uh, unreceptive uh, to kind of the overall uh, stuff that's happening on the internet. Uh, and instead, uh, we seem to find ourselves largely uh, responding only to those things that are a really big deal. And these types of uh, news articles uh, are kind of helping to feed that. So, but let's take a look at what was happening in addition uh, to those two events uh, that were in the news that day. Well, on that day, uh, we at Team Cymru, our global uh, sensor network, uh, we have a collection of honeypots and uh, dark nets, sinkholes, things like that, uh, that are designed 
to sit and listen on the internet uh, and try to attract some type of uh, malicious behavior uh, so that we can understand uh, how people are misusing the internet and so on. Uh, those sensors picked up uh, 27.6 million events uh, that were related to compromised devices uh, on that day. Uh, of those 27.6 million events, they were representative of 191 countries. Uh, keep in mind, uh, there are only 195 total countries. Uh, so we're talking about uh, misbehaviors uh, recorded uh, and documented, if you will, uh, that, from, that originate uh, from essentially uh, every country uh, in the world. Of those, 3.6 million of them uh, were just specifically bots. And what a bot is, is uh, it's a piece of code that gets executed on, on a system, sometimes directly as a file, uh, perhaps a download uh, executable, uh, or perhaps a malicious payload in the form of a PDF uh, or a um, document, uh, office document, spreadsheet, things like that. Uh, and uh, once infected, uh, those devices uh, then check in with uh, a mothership that gives them instructions on what to do next. Sometimes those instructions are to attack people. Sometimes those uh, instructions are to steal information. Sometimes the information being asked to be stolen is local from a file system, perhaps documents of a specific type, uh, or sometimes uh, the information uh, that is in instructed to the bots to steal uh, is login. Uh, details uh, that uh, is used to get in access to uh, other systems, perhaps banking details, things like that. But overall, those 3.6 million bots, there was no statistic in the news that day uh, because there was an uncalculable uh, amount of information that was likely stored. And to give you an idea what that looks like, let's take a look at this Pony Loader botnet. So Pony Loader uh, is a uh, for hire platform. Uh, operated uh, by miscreants, uh, believed to be uh, somewhere in Eastern Europe. Um, it has multiple functions. Uh, it's able to act as both an information stealer uh, and exfiltrator, uh, so it can be trained to look for specific uh, files to exfiltrate. Uh, it can be trained to look for specific website credentials uh, to exfiltrate. Um, but that information uh, goes back uh, to these command and control servers. So what you're seeing here uh, is our observation uh, of some specific command and control servers um, found, uh, uh, found to be uh, used as the communication hub uh, for three spe uh, specific uh, pony loader instances. Now, uh, you'll notice the infected red uh, devices that uh, the dots that are communicating back, those uh, are uh, actually all over within inside the countries that you're seeing there. Uh, for the sake of visibility uh, and kind of uh, simplicity, uh, we're showing just uh, kind of the specific breakdown uh, per country. So uh, if you note those red dots seem to be showing up in the same places over and over again, uh, that is by design. Now, in the case of the C2s, uh, those are showing what network pop uh, that they're coming out to the internet at. So that's why uh, you see the breakdown that way. So one of the things, though, uh, that's very, very uh, worth note uh, is if you note how little time has actually passed uh, here running, uh, running through. So we have it uh, sped up, obviously, uh, faster than real time. Um, but you can see in just a few uh, minutes of time that has passed, uh, there have actually been uh, many, many, many uh, connections uh, from the bot devices themselves uh, talking uh, to the command and control servers. Uh, and this is happening 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week. Now, Pony Loader, uh, if uh, you haven't heard of it in the past, uh, it is a for hire program. That's why it's called Loader. Uh, and there are other uh, miscreant operations that happen uh, together in relation uh, with Pony Loader. Uh, so, for example, um, various types of click fraud uh, or pay to install types of uh, uh, services uh, are sold uh, via Pony Loader. Uh, Pony Loader uh, management, they will also sometimes lease out uh, specific nodes uh, for people to use uh, in their DDoS efforts or in their own uh, or other uh, botnet uh, efforts. Perhaps uh, you could think of it as a uh, uh, you know, 
DIY uh, business for, for these folks, because that is essentially how they run it. So now that's just one uh, example. Uh, let's take another look at, uh, or let's take a look at another one. So this is XOR DDoS. Uh, XOR DDoS uh, is a bot platform uh, that targets uh, specifically Linux uh, systems. Uh, you'll often hear people uh, talk about the safety that you get uh, from using a you know, non-Windows operating system uh, and things like that. Uh, XR DDoS is, is one of the examples uh, that I give to people as to why there is no operating system that is just inherently better or worse than any others. They all have their issues, uh, and XR DDoS is, is one of those that shows the attacks that happen against Linux-based systems. Now, for the most part, XR DDoS uh, does spread uh, by uh, hosts that are reaching out and scanning, uh, looking for uh, individual specific hosts uh, that are running uh, weak authentication systems. Uh, so this is one of those times uh, when having uh, the ability to do two-factor authentication uh, or things like that would be a great idea. Uh, if you haven't done so for what it's worth, uh, look to enable 2FA on all of your uh, services that you possibly can. Uh, it can definitely save you uh, a lot of trouble and whatnot later. So. These bots, though, uh, these XOR DDoS bots, uh, as you might guess by the DDoS in the name, uh, these are all just uh, nodes sitting and waiting uh, and listening uh, for instructions from the command server uh, to tell them who to reach out uh, and to attack next. Uh, those bots uh, sit. Once they're given the instruction of who to specifically attack, uh, they then uh, go and, and attack uh, by way of various different uh, types of packet-based attacks, SIN floods, uh, UDP floods, things like that, um, against the target trying to knock it offline. So, and that's uh, DDoS, but let's take a look at some point of sale uh, malware called Cassidet. Uh, Cassidet is uh, similar to uh, how the other, um, uh, how, for example, uh, Emotet and those types of uh, banking Trojan uh, information stealers worked. This is uh, point of sale specific malware uh, that is uh, spread. Uh, in this case, it was spread through things like Excel spreadsheets uh, and things like that. Um, but in, uh, this is us tracking. This is just one of the C2s uh, that we're tracking. Uh, and you can see that there are infected point of sale systems all over the world. Uh, and those point of sale systems, uh, presumably, uh, if someone were to sit down and make use of them, uh, do result in presumably your credit card information uh, being taken uh, in real time uh, and sent back uh, to the mothership so that they can uh, make use of them. Um, now, uh, this botnet functions in real time. So as uh, things are uh, taken off of the individual point of sale system, uh, Sometimes there are uh, temporary use numbers and things like that uh, to try to thwart uh, the ability from account information uh, to be stolen. Uh, but in the case of Casita, uh, when people would go to use it, uh, they can uh, get that uh, temporary number sent in real time uh, back to the screen to then uh, maybe also then uses it uh, in near real time as well. Uh, so uh, the fact that the internet is keeping these hosts talking uh, in so quickly uh, enables uh, for what you could think of as uh, essentially uh, real-time crime uh, that's going on. So there are really no specific systems uh, that are uh, safe uh, from those things, and not a lot uh, has actually changed. So uh, if you've uh, followed in the news, uh, earlier this year, uh, there was a large uh, takedown for Crydex or Emotet. Uh, this is a video showing uh, just how big that network was. Uh, this is an older video. Um, this uh, botnet uh, had been taken down, but this is showing it uh, kind of what it looks like in its heyday. Uh, and this is uh, a tracking of five specific C2s uh, that were out in the wild uh, and the scope of infection uh, for those hosts. Uh, now, in this case, uh, we I did uh, go ahead and diversify uh, the dots so you can actually see uh, or get a better idea uh, of what cities and places like that, uh, where the connections are coming from. Um, but as you can see uh, from, this is almost six years ago, uh, uh, there's not a lot has actually changed. 
uh, this information, uh, uh, this type of pursuit of information, if you will, or information stealing uh, has been going on uh, for a long time. Uh, and there may or may not uh, be, you know, any end in sight, uh, but there certainly won't be uh, without our participation uh, and without all of us uh, trying uh, to do our best to, to put an end to these types of misuses uh, of the Internet. So to give you an idea of what uh, all of those 26 million events look like, uh, this is uh, a display of all of the individual events uh, as they were identified uh, in the course of the 24 hours. Uh, and what you're seeing here uh, is basically uh, everywhere where there are uh, people on earth uh, making use of the internet, uh, it seems that essentially uh, there are hosts there uh, that are infected uh, and that are uh, taking advantage of the Internet to be used uh, for miscreant and, and malicious operations. Uh, and as you can see, there's really uh, no safe corners of the Internet. Uh, there is essentially, uh, you know, no network uh, that's left untouched. Uh, and there are uh, hosts scanning, prodding, poking, uh, looking for access to systems uh, constantly, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And so even while we've been here uh, presenting today, uh, and while we've been here uh, talking today, uh, that end effect uh, is that while we've been sitting here, uh, our phones have been scanned, our laptops have been scanned, our servers have been scanned, uh, and so on. Uh, and that is uh, kind of the state of the Internet in the course of the day. Now, it shouldn't be thought of only uh, as a miscreant or bad guy effort as well. Uh, there have been instances, uh, and in fact, uh, we have a visualization of one uh, where a, a country uh, was upset. Um, so uh, there's a website called greatfire.org uh, that tracks uh, government operated censorship uh, of the Internet uh, from within uh, China. Uh, and this, again, uh, though quite dated, uh, it shows uh, how quickly uh, people can weaponize uh, the Internet. Uh, so this was a, uh, a, a distributed denial of the service attack uh, that was going uh, to take down this website, greatfire.org. Now, in our case, uh, also, by the way, uh, note how slowly time is moving uh, at the top here. So this is how uh, aggressive the DDoS attack was. Uh, and it's believed that this uh, attack was conducted uh, in response uh, for some critical press or, uh, that was uh, shared on that specific website uh, related uh, to the government uh, censoring um, uh, other people's use of the internet within China. Um, so, but you can see uh, just how massive uh, their attack footprint was used for this. Uh, and what they did was they had figured out a way uh, to leverage DNS, the service, uh, as uh, a way to facilitate uh, this attack. Uh, so what you're seeing are hosts uh, that had all been redirected uh, via DNS. Uh, they had all been redirected en masse uh, towards greatfire.org. Uh, greatfire now, in our case, uh, though, you see how much uh, of this continuous traffic uh, an attack uh, that you see there, uh, we, this is only a visualization uh, of less than 3% of the actual attack traffic. Uh, we saw considerably more of it, uh, but at some point, uh, you know, data at that point starts to get kind of hard to visualize. So some of you may be asking yourself, what does this matter? What exactly uh, does botnets and people misusing the internet, uh, you know, on a constant everyday basis, what does that matter? Uh, it's just packets, it's just data, uh, it's just information, it's just accounts, we can make new accounts. Well, the video you're seeing right now uh, is what I'll present to you uh, as why these things matter. So this is a home uh, in Evansville, Indiana, uh, that was identified uh, as the source of a threat uh, of a bombing that would happen on July 4th a few years ago, and local law enforcement there in Evansville, Indiana, uh, was able to identify uh, by way of the assistance of some website administrators, they were able to identify uh, the source of the attack uh, of where this threat had come from. Uh, so they, in conjunction with county and state officials, uh, conducted a raid uh, on the home 
uh, at the very beginning when you saw them smashing through the glass of the door. Uh, they immediately followed that with a flashbang uh, that went into the room. And as they charged in, as you saw, uh, there's a child there and some other folks. So it turns out this home uh, is uh, occupied by a 68-year-old grandmother uh, who had her grandchildren uh, present with her. Um, and uh, though she herself uh, was not a big user of the internet, uh, she did have internet service for the family because as we saw earlier, the internet is an important uh, thing uh, to society as a whole. Uh, so even uh, you know, grandmothers have internet access. Well, in this case, this grandmother uh, didn't know a lot about how to run the internet uh, in her home. Uh, and she uh, had set up the internet so that uh, unfortunately anyone uh, driving by could gain access to it. Uh, and in this case, uh, her neighbor across the street uh, was a young man who uh, had actually uh, decided to make those threats uh, about police. Uh, he was a gang member uh, and uh, former felon and so on. Uh, and because of this person's uh, threats uh, against police officers online uh, about a bombing that they were gonna be conducting, uh, this family had their house uh, raided uh, and uh, SWAT team uh, come through their home, uh, go through their entire lives uh, at gunpoint. So when you ask yourself, uh, why do these things uh, matter as a whole? Well, ask yourself, you know, what if this was your grandmother? Uh, and what if these uh, was happen something that happened to your family? So as you look around uh, and as you go through the policies and, and uh, discussions that you're having today uh, about how to continue uh, growing and, and making great use of the internet, uh, I ask you to, to keep in mind uh, of security uh, as a, a practice, as a piece of our planning, uh, so that as we move ahead, uh, we'll have fewer instances uh, of these kind of digital issues uh, splashing over uh, into uh, the rest of the world. So that's all I have. Uh, I thank you very much for your time. Uh, and I hope uh, you got something insightful from this talk today. Uh, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.